Well, hello there, I'm Chris from TechSpert, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the fresh new Realme 10 Pro Plus. This budget-friendly blower boasts some premium style design as well as some pretty solid specs including a 6.7 inch 120Hz OLED display, stereo speaker setup, you've got some Dimensity 1080 chops in there, a big old battery, 5G support and a 108 megapixel Samsung HM6 camera sensor. All of that plus a bloody lovely bright yellow box. Speaking of which, let's whip the Realme 10 Pro Plus on out of that box, take you on a full on tour, and then we'll magically swoosh forward it in time and I'll deliver my final verdict on the battery life, the camera tech, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what do you get in that box? Well, you've got yourself one Realme 10 Pro Plus, bit of a beefcake power adapter. It's a 67 watt SuperVOOC effort. Bit of Type-C USB cable action. And oh yes, my friends, you do also get a condom case bundled in that box to keep your Realme 10 Pro Plus nice and safe. And that right there is absolutely everything. So nice and simple, let's crack on with the phone. Now, hopefully the Realme 10 Pro Plus will enjoy a full UK launch soon. You can expect it to cost around 350 quid when it does finally emerge here in Blighty. And I really hope that happens soon because first impressions are very strong indeed. This is an absolutely stunning smartphone. It's a 6.7 inch device, but it really does not feel like it because that screen pretty much fills the entire front. Very skinny bezel surrounding it, helped by the fact that the screen actually curves slightly around the left and right edges. And yes, this does mean if you clutch the phone really tight, there is a bit of palm intrusion. Generally, the screen is quite responsive, but occasionally you'll just notice that, yeah, the notifications bar will suddenly pop down and an app won't open because your fingers have just ever so slightly sneaked onto the screen there. So that's a bit of a shame, but yeah, just clutch it a little bit more lightly and you should be absolutely fine. But I'm also super impressed by just how thin and light this thing is. It's just 7.8 millimeters thick and weighs just 173 grams, which is insane for a 6.7 inch smartphone. Gotta say, it's some very impressive design work from Realme here. But despite its somewhat dainty and precious appearance, apparently the Realme 10 Pro Plus is tougher than the average Weatherspoon's pork chop. According to Realme, this thing can survive extreme temperatures and that screen is double plated. There's no official IP rating here for water and dust resistance, but here's hoping it can survive a good few knocks. Now, if we flip it around, the rest of the Realme 10 Pro Plus is just constructed from plastic. That's the frame and the back end. The hero color option for the Realme 10 Pro Plus is called Hyperspace, and all dramatics aside, it kind of looks like a fairy just shot its load all over the back end. Of course, if you don't want your smartphone to resemble the contents of a unicorn's bowel movement, you can always go for the other two options, which are black, well, this happy little blue model right here, which is kind of a halfway house, it's bright and merry, but without that fairy jizz finish. Of course, you can still enjoy an attractive little light show when you're moving the phone about. Very nice. And as you can see there, the camera bumps aren't too bumpy either. They don't stick too far out of that arse. So onwards to the software, and thankfully you do have the latest, freshest Android 13 running here on the Realme 10 Pro Plus, but with the Realme UI 4 slathered on top. If you haven't used a Realme smartphone before, don't worry, Realme UI won't be too jarring. It is still a mostly stock Android vibe. Realme hasn't tinkered with that UI too much. It's quite similar to ColorOS and uh, now OxygenOS as well, but you do have some pretty solid customization. So dive into always on display, for instance. You now have the option of adding a Spotify widget directly to that always on display. You've also got that slightly depressing home option as well, which basically shows you a polar bear, a penguin, or a bit of coral slowly dying off because basically humans are scum and we've completely ruined the planet. Hooray! Oh, but don't forget to regularly upgrade your smartphone. Consume, consume, consume. Anyhow, lots of great options on it here, including the inside. You've got Bitmoji if that's what you're into. You've got Realme's Real Meow Cat thingy. It's like a Terminator Moggy from the future. And you can also mess around with the system icons, the color as well, so you can have them matching that wallpaper. You can even bugger about with the fingerprint animation. So yeah, pretty much everything is fair game. You've also got lots of nifty gesture control, including a one-handed mode if you do need a bit of help reaching up to the very top of that massive display. And loads of other features, some of which we'll touch on later in the Realme 10 Pro Plus review. One of the bad things about Realme UI is you do get a plethora of crapware stuffed on here to begin with. To be honest, it's not as bad as some rivals. You don't get the likes of Booking.com and Facebook and LinkedIn and TikTok chucked on here. But there are still some randoms like Ozone. I've got absolutely no idea what that is. That can get right in the bin. 
Yandex as well, absolutely no clue what this is, but again, at least you've got the option of straight away uninstalling it. And then Realme also provides a browser and a few other bits you don't really need because Google has already got those covered. Now, as far as jank goes, I have had some issues these last few days with notifications, mainly I didn't bloody get any unless I was actually connected to Wi-Fi. As soon as I strolled out of the house and was on mobile data, not a notification in sight. Now, I have suffered this issue before on Realme and Oppo smartphones. Usually, you just dive into the power saving settings and have a bit of a play around in there. Lock your favorite apps. They don't close down in the background, stuff like that, and that generally helps. But no such luck here on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. Hopefully, it's just some weird little bug that will be stamped out really soon. For your security shenanigans, where you've got an in-display fingerprint sensor here on the Realme 10 Pro Plus, it is a simple optical scanner, but so far, TouchWorld seems to be working really well. And you do have a face unlock option as well, which is quite handy as a backup. As for storage, well, when you purchase your Realme 10 Pro Plus, you've got a choice of 128 or 256 gigs. This is the 256. Uh, Going to take me a while to fill that up, even with the mighty Genshin Impact slapped on this thing. But Sunday, there is no room in the Realme 10 Pro Plus for a microSD memory card, only two SIM cards. So however much storage you choose, that's what you're stuck with. Now, most smartphones around this 300 to 400 pound price point these days sport a gorgeous OLED display. The Realme 10 Pro Plus is no exception. It's a 6.7 inch, slightly curved, as I mentioned before. You've got a full HD plus resolution, so nice sharp visuals, even though it is quite a spacious panel. You've got pin sharp contrast on here, nice deep blacks. When you are streaming HD already content, it will look proper lush. Viewing angles are fantastic. You've got a slightly brighter display here on the Pro Plus compared with the regular Realme 10 Pro. And with the default screen settings, those colors are proper punchy as well. So animated fair really stands out, looks absolutely fantastic. The refresh rate does max out at 120 hertz as well. So it beats the likes of the Pixel 6 here, which tops off sadly at 60 hertz still. And as you can see there, it's a dynamic refresh rate as well. So it will scale up or down depending on what you're up to. As for the audio, well, it is a stereo speaker setup here on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. You've got a speaker actually housed here on the top edge as well as the bottom edge. So let's check out that output, see if it's actually any good. But anyway, Christ, that's enough hot tech chat for basically the whole of December. Time to grab our ankles and brace for a hot, beefy ejection of viewer comments. Now, first off, I love how the Realme 10 Pro Plus's volume doesn't max out at 100%. Oh no, nothing wussy like that. It goes all the way up to 200%, baby. And this is called the Ultra Mode, and it certainly is a step up above just the regular 100%. My sweet spot, personally, is that 100% because it's still pretty loud, but also the audio is still quite crisp. There's not much tinniness or distortion, whereas when you bump it up into that ultra mode... Enough space to swing a dead cat, maybe a dead hamster at best. It is louder, but all of a sudden the audio doesn't sound as good. It's a bit crackly, it's a bit grainy. But all the same, that ultra mode will be quite handy if you're in a really noisy environment somewhere out and about. You just want to hear what is happening if you're watching a video, for instance. And even though those speakers aren't actually blasting audio directly at your face, you do get a bit of a stereo effect from it all. So yeah, good stuff. Sadly, the Realme 10 Pro Plus is sans headphone jack, which I believe is a feature you do get on the regular Realme 10 Pro. We do have Bluetooth 5.2 streaming support if you do want to get connected to a speaker, some headphones. And now moving swiftly on to performance. And the Realme 10 Pro Plus is powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 1080 chipset. That's backed by the 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. My review model came with 8 gigs. Here in the About Device section of the settings, they do claim it's got 12 gigs of RAM, but that's only because they're adding on 4 gigs of virtual memory, which isn't as good as the real stuff. But anyway, with the Dimensity 1080 in charge, I found that everyday performance on the Realme 10 Pro Plus is absolutely stunning. And if you are into gaming, well, good news, guys. Even the most demanding Android fare like Genshin Impact will play it with a buttery smooth frame rate even on the higher detail settings. I found that screen was responsive enough for doing battles with all manner of nasty gribblies, zero latency to speak of. And even when you are gaming for a good couple of hours solid, I found the Realme 10 Pro Plus stayed nice and cool as well, so no throttling, no issues with burnt fingertips. And yes, Realme UI does add in a proper dedicated gaming mode as well, which is packed to the tits with all kinds of great features. So you've got a proper performance mode, otherwise battery saving if you're just playing a bit of Wordle or whatever. You can adjust the screen brightness levels, the screen sensitivity. You've got all the usual do not disturb shenanigans and everything as well. Great stuff. And yeah, like most blowers these days, budget or otherwise, you do have full 5G support on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. Dual 5G support, in fact, because it stretches to both of those SIM trays. 
And then as far as battery life is concerned, despite the fact that this is a skinny Wii U run, you do have a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity battery crammed inside. And I've got to say, this past week, the battery life has been absolutely sublime on the Realme 10 Pro Plus. I've never come close to running dry in a 24 hour period, even after the end of a very intensive day, good bit of gaming, media streaming, lots of camera use and all that good stuff. I've generally got around 25 to 30% battery remaining. And so let's finish this delightful little jaunt through the wonderful world of Realme 10 Pro Plus with a squint at the camera tech. And what you have here is a 108 megapixel primary shooter using Samsung's HM6 sensor and also a bog standard 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and a 2 megapixel macro snapper. Now even though it is a 108 megapixel primary camera on the Realme 10 Pro Plus it does use 9 in 1 pixel binning when you are shooting in the regular photo mode so you will end up with a 12 megapixel 3000 by 4000 pixel photo. If you want to, however, you can very easily shoot at the full resolution by swapping to the 108 megapixel mode. This can be quite handy if you want to crop into a shot after the fact, just to keep some of that fine detail in there, but otherwise not really necessary. That HM6 sensor can capture good looking pics, although living subjects do pose a problem, even in good light. That shutter speed is a little bit laggy, so any movement does often result in blur. And while any photos taken in ambient light are often bright enough, courtesy of the pixel bit in tech, a lot of my indoor shots did look a little bit soft with a lack of finer detail. In low light situations, the Realme 10 Pro Plus does about as well as expected. It's no Pixel 6a and once again, if there's any motion, you can bet your floppiest of floppy bits that the picture will come out blurry. And while the phone can handle a bit of contrast, it does fall on its arse somewhat when those conditions are truly testing. Still, if your subject isn't too full of sugar and can keep relatively still, the portrait mode captures good looking pics with some lovely bokeh action. You've got a variety of different modes that you can swap between here. So you've got the likes of that portrait mode, you've got the night mode of course. And if we flip along to more, as you can see quite a few other extra bits packed on here, including the likes of the pro mode if you want full manual control. Using this you can tinker with the likes of the ISO levels, the shutter speed, the white balance. And you can also shoot in RAW format as well as just regular JPEG. And if you want to shoot a bit of whole movie action, instead swap to video, you can capture footage at up to 4K resolution, but only at 30 frames per second. If you swap to 60 FPS, it bumps you down to full HD. And I was happy enough with the video that this thing spaffed out too. At that 4K resolution, you get a good looking picture, even in quite low light, although softer light can confuse the focus at times. Stabilization is still decent enough at Ultra HD level, while the audio pickup is great too. And then lastly, flip to that front facing camera and what you got there is a 16 megapixel shooter. And it's a pretty bog standard snapper, so don't expect great looking shots, especially if you're Instagramming from some dingy basement bar or anywhere a bit dark. And no issues at all with Skyping or Zooming or whatever on this thing either. The picture quality is pretty decent, full HD resolution. And again, that audio pickup, no worries at all. Even a fairly noisy environment, generally the other people at the other end could work out what I was banging on about. And there you have it, my lovelies. That is my full unboxing and review of the Realme 10 Pro Plus. A pretty stunning bit of kit for this sort of price that will hopefully be hitting the UK soon because it really is a very enticing prospect indeed. Of course, the Realme 10 Pro Plus will soon have hot competition from the likes of Xiaomi's Redmi Note 12 series. We've got lots of other great budget phones just lingering on the horizon. So stay tuned for full unboxings and reviews of those bad boys too. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to see all that shenanigans. Let me know what you think of the Realme 10 Pro Plus down below and uh, have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.